All right, so I'm gonna lay out the difference between factory suspension and any level lift pertaining to front suspension, rear suspension, steering geometry, and drive shaft angles. So what we have on the rack right now is a 2017 F350. Uh, this truck is completely stock, uh, single rear wheel. Um, so the way that this factory system works, and I'm just gonna cover this real quick. A lot of you probably already know this, but I'm just gonna run through the basics and then we'll tie this back into what we're doing with a, with a 90 level truck. Um, so the way that this suspension is set up, or steering geometry rather, is set up, is that everything on this is horizontal. So um, you're running from your steering wheel to your steering box here, from the steering box to your pitman arm, and this is gonna swing back and forth to move this tie bar, which connects to the steering knuckle, which will steer your tires, or steer, steer, your, steer your wheels. Um, so this is considered, uh, we're just going to call it like a horizontal setup. So everything is moving in this horizontal motion when you're steering left to right, which that is completely fine on a truck that does not have any sort of adjustability to the suspension. Cause this truck is really only going to have maybe four inches, maybe five inches of, of droop and compression under normal operation. Um, but even under that, being that this is relatively horizontal, your axle is still going to shift, your steering wheel is going to shift slightly, you're not really going to notice it in the cab, it's going to be pretty minimal. Um, but once you start taking these and pulling these angles off of something that is, it's not perfectly flat, but you know, relatively straight, uh, you'll notice that that geometry gets thrown way off. Uh, so that's one of the things you see in a lot of, a lot of lifted trucks where you have pitman arm drops and track bar drops to try to maintain this horizontal angle. Um, so your track bar is set up the same way, or your panhard bar is set up the same way as your steering bar. So you can see that these two bars are going to be pretty similar to angle. I don't know if they're exact, but they're pretty darn close. So as your suspension um, compresses and, and droops, um, these will maintain similar angle, uh, which will keep your axle relatively lined up with the frame. Now this is a very basic explanation on how this, how this operates. Um, and by moving this bar side to side, what you're gonna do through your steering box to your pitman arm, moving this left to right, you'll be alter, you'll be moving this knuckle left to right, which pivots on your upper and lower ball joint and connects to your other wheel through this tie bar. Um, so, and just take note on this because we'll go and cover this on the any level truck on what the differences are and how this works because essentially we're accomplishing the same thing through a slightly different method. Um, so here's how the front, uh, front steering geometry works on these. And then this is, uh, these are factory coil spring trucks. It's a Dana 60 RS um, and then they run on a radius arm. So if you come underneath the truck, you can see these radius arms here, um, just a single no caster adjustment, um, two fixed points here, one fixed point back here, which means anytime you get any sort of, you hit a bump or you have extension or, or droop on your, um, on your suspension, you're actually rotating the pinion angle relative to your drive shaft. Um, and I'll go over this again when we talk about the triangulated four link on the any level, um, cause we'll be getting rid of this, this fixed, um, two or uh, yeah, this fixed um, upper and lower setup on this one single radius arm. Um, so there's basically the setup on the front suspension. Moving to the back, um, this is totally different from what we're going to cover in an any level setup. But we're running uh, this is a factory 350, so it's running a Dana M275 in the back. Um, leaf sprung with two mounting points front. In back, uh, there is no four link. Uh, it's unneeded with the leaf. Now, something you do get with leaf spring suspension is axle wrap. So as you accelerate or decelerate, you'll see this pinion angle go up or go down, depending upon what you're doing. And we can correct that with uh, well, majority of that anyways with a you know with a four link setup because that also doubles as like a traction bar. But the way this is set up is leaf spring axle, very minimal spacing. It's factory block, and then. U-bolts tied in, shocks are fixed directly to the frame. Um, so separate spring, separate shock, same idea on the front. Um, so that's pretty much the, the factory suspension setup on how uh, this, this lines up. So we'll pull it at any level truck and show you what that one's all about. 
All right, so this is the front end setup on the any level lift. This is a four to eight uh, manual system. Uh, so we refer to it as a four to eight. This is basically an increment of slightly above level. Uh, six or eight inches. So this system's adjustable in different, uh, so three different settings. Uh, this is also available where it goes all the way up to 13. So it'll go four, six, eight, 10, 12, and 13. Um, so this one's on a 250, so we do limit these to, to eight, but all the geometry is gonna be the same. These run the same undercarriage regardless of the two systems. Um, so this is on a 2018 F250. And you can see the front end on this one looks quite a bit different than it did on the, the last truck that we just went over, which was stock. Um, so, and we're, we're in upstate New York, so we just pulled this inside. It's winter time out, so everything's all wet, snowy and icy and all that good stuff, but still be able to get the idea here. So, um, the biggest thing on this that's gonna be drastically different is that instead of going in this horizontal motion from your pitman arm to your knuckle, or from your frame mount side of the track or pan hard bar to your axle, this is converted to basically linear through triangulation. So on your steering side, you're connected from your pitman arm to your tie bar, one is directly below the other. And then you're looking at the same thing on your track bar, your pan hard assembly, one is directly below the other. Now this connects to this through this triangulated link. So you have these two, three, these three pieces, which allows this to fold in on itself. And then the uh, passenger side or the outside of this bar is gonna run on the slide link to basically just allow this arm to move to slide in and out and hold this as a fixed pivot point for the triangulation. So you're connected at a linear point on both so as you go up or down with your suspension, uh, you're still maintaining that line through this triangulation. So that's probably one of the biggest differences in front end, um, front end componentry, steering componentry uh, between this and, and stock. So you can see that there's a lot more going on up here. Now, a couple other things too, that this is being, uh, you know, we're, you're typically running a lot larger wheel and tire on these. You can go anywhere from a stock tire up to guys are running 42s or 44s. So you have all that excessive weight that you got to move around. So there are provisions made in this to make this more rigid, more sturdy and more heavy duty. So if we were to take these components off and, um, you know, look at them a little bit more closer. You'll see that the it's, you know much thicker material. Uh, the welds are a lot nicer. Um, so the componentry on this is going to be quite a bit different from factory, uh, as far as just basic quality and and, and how rigid it actually is. Um, so we're eliminating that horizontal motion. So you can kind of just take that theory and just and toss it right out. So anything that goes to any level is always going to be in this linear pattern. So you're connecting top the bottom, top to bottom, through this triangulated link. Um, so also for rigidity, that's something that, uh, that will make the system a lot more durable, especially moving some larger wheels and tires, is that your, um, your tie bar bracket will stiffen that bar up. And then the way your pad hard setup is done, uh, this is also done through some very rigid mounting. Uh, so that makes that a lot more stable too. So inside the truck, uh, what you're going to notice actually operating one of these is that your steering is, I'm not going to say it's tighter than stock, but it, you don't get that, that, that little bit of play that you, you commonly see in a lifted truck running horizontal steering components. Pretty much any other system, actually any other system, not pretty much any other system that's on the market is not going to be running this design. So you're going to be running horizontal on pretty much any, on anything that's, that's mass produced. Um, and you will get a little bit of play in the wheel. You notice it with a lot of kicks, even with the upgraded track bars and the heavy duty components, um, there's still a little bit of play. With any level setup, this is very, very precise. So when you are running the truck from the driver's seat, um, you're not getting this slight steering wheel rock. Um, and then moving to the suspension side on this is we're running, let's see if we can get underneath here, maybe shoot this from the other side where we can see the coil. So we're running a 2.5 King coil over um, front and rear. 
So it has eight inches of travel. So four inch extension, four inch droop. Or I'm sorry, four inch compression, four inch extension. Uh, so these sit right about in that middle point of that that uh, that setup, you know, when when dialed in correctly. Um, so that eliminates the need for a separate spring and a, and a separate shock. Um, this is all done in one unit. Now this is a manual system, so repositioning this coil over front to rear, running on this lower wedge and the mounting holes at the top will give you your, your lift or uh, lowering to set your ride height. Um, so and then this setup is done pretty much same way in the rear. Now getting into your front end, you can see that we ditched that single radius arm and went to a triangulated four link. So the triangulation will make this front axle a lot more rigid um, by trying, not necessarily eliminating, but drastically reducing that side to side motion, um, eliminating it by the pan hard assembly, but drastically reducing through triangulation. Um, and then your, it also gives you a caster adjustment. So both upper and lower, you can slide your axle forward or backward to get in the appropriate position. Um, so with your fixed bar, you don't have that ability to run the axle through that drastic range of motion without changing your pinion input angle or your caster angle. You're very limited with that short link. With this being quite a bit um, longer overall uh, and being done in two separate links, the way that this is mechanized and engineered is that that keeps that pinion angle um, appropriate to your output angle of your transfer case for your drive shaft. Um, so that way you're not getting, you're getting full use of the drive shaft, uh, full use of your four wheel drive all the way from that stock or level height up to 13 inches of lift without having to change any of this componentry. Um, now, once you get over eight inches, there is a driveline package for these that will give you an extended front shaft, but up to eight inches, we can run a factory shaft and index the transfer case, which is part of all of the, uh, index is part of all the kits. Um, so there's pretty much, there's the rundown on the front. Um, I'll give you an idea on the, the main difference between these systems. Now, moving to the back, this is gonna be something drastically different from what we were dealing with on a factory truck. Um, so you can see that our leaf spring, which is typically mounted at this point and another fixed point in the back is completely gone. So that's been removed. Um, we've replaced that with a 2.5 dual rate King coilover. Uh, so it's depending upon your ride height setup or your, your load setup rather, these spring rates are adjusted to your specs. So like this particular truck um, is set up with a 350 over a 1500 uh, to give you the tow capacity. If your truck is carrying more weight, uh, we have one done with a service body um, that has a lot of stuff in the back, has a welder in the back. That primary rate spring is going to be a little bit different, still stacked on top of your 1500. So that way you don't get that, that drop and you still have your full four inch compression, full inch, four inch extension on your coilover. Um, so leaf spring's gone. This is doing the job, part of the job with the leaf spring. The second part is going to be done by this four link. So, by removing the leaf spring and replacing it with these components, you're actually increasing ride quality drastically in the back without sacrificing load capacity. You still have factory load or better capacity out of this coilover, um, set up the way that it currently is with the dual rate. And then the rigidity of having a leaf spring there is done or changed rather to this triangulated four link. Um, so the way this four link is set up, and this is much more rigid than that leaf spring setup, um, you know, it eliminates that axle wrap. So by having a connection point on the bottom and a connection point on the top, as you load or unload your drive line, you won't see this axle rotate because it's no longer on a point that can be flexed. I mean, there might be a very, very, very small amount of movement in this, but nothing relatively even close. Uh, probably 95% of that's eliminated by going into this four link setup. Um, and also doing this longer link, uh, it's gonna enhance your ride quality and your stability. Um, so the triangulation is what keeps your axle center to the frame without needing a pan hard or a track bar. So this is completely open in the back from a pan hard or a track bar, which will allow us to move it through that range of motion without having to have any sort of adjustable slide length. So that's just to eliminate some, some mechanisms. Um, you still have 
the same rigidity that you would with a leaf spring because of this triangulation. So these links going at an angle, these links going straight, holds that axle center to the frame so you don't get any sway. Uh, and these are connected to a ridiculously heavy duty built cross member. So this rear cross member weighs a ton. Um, not literally a ton, but it's very heavy. Um, and that's what connects your axle to the frame. So this is probably more, actually not probably, this is definitely more durable than a factory leaf spring setup as far as how rigid this actually is. Um, so your connection points are going to be improved uh, to keep your axle where it's supposed to be. Um, and then the back is set up very similar to the front where you're able to adjust your ride height. This is done in a linear motion. I'm not really going to cover that in this video, but this is done in a linear motion by um, unbolting and rebolting shock position in the bottom, unbolting and rebolting position, shock position at the top. You're able to change your ride height very similar to the way that you do in the front. Um, but this is designed to mechanize through that range of motion to keep your pinion angle uh, true to the output angle of your transfer case so you don't get any driveline vibrations through that full range of motion. So this truck goes from four to eight, so it's four, six, eight. Um, but the same undercarriage componentry uh, uh, transitions to the 350s, which will do 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, and 13, um, respectively front and rear. Uh, so there's the big difference between these two systems. You can see that the any level system is drastically different from factory. Um, and then in some other videos, we're going to cover the difference between the manual and the hydraulic systems. Um, but if you have any questions on any of these systems, you can call us at the shop. Our number will be at the bottom of the screen. Um, and we do have these kicks in stock. We do have these ready to ship. Um, we can also schedule in for, for install. So any questions, give us a call.